us for the height of efficiency. We're actually recording the April Q&A early on in April, so, but I don't know when you're gonna to get to see this. Anyway, my first question is probably going to cause some excitement in the bee world, because here we go. I'm gonna to have to read it, because it's a fairly involved question, and it does get asked quite a bit in the bee world, and my mate is quite right, because he's probably asked plenty of beekeepers, at functions and other bee clubs, and this is one of those controversial questions. So here you go, I'm gonna read his question and then I'm gonna try and answer it. And if you disagree with me, hit me up in the comments and hell, we could just open up a great discussion for the next 25 years or until I'm dead anyway. He says, good day Mark, I'm new to beekeeping and who is setting, starting to figure out beekeeping is quite involved when you ask more than one beekeeper, you get 20 answers. You know, I mean, that's he doesn't actually say that here, but that's about what he would have found out. I'm sure he got no definitive answer from any beekeeper anywhere because there isn't one. I have watched every episode since the beginning of your channel. I currently have one colony in my backyard and I have a question which is yet to be answered by the Australian Beekeeping Society. An Australian beekeeper who understands our weather and extreme weather events, which is typical. You should see some extreme weather events going on up in New South Wales at the minute. Holy mackerel. I saw a poor beekeeper up there and his beehives were washed, washed down the bloody river. I mean, I don't know. I feel for those lads. And if you are a New South Walesian beekeeper and you're watching this show, I'm thinking of you boys cause, or, and in Queensland too. But New South Wales just comes to mind because it's the, got re-flooded again. I mean, God me gracious me. I don't know. Anyway, we're not going to have a climate discussion because that's a whole nother video. Anyway, sorry, I digress. <laughs> My question is, eight frames or 10 frame hive, which one is better for the bees? Which one should new beekeepers, which one should new beekeepers use and which one shouldn't they? Should I convert all my boxes and lids and bases to an eight frame system? Now I'm assuming that you've just come from somewhere and someone's told you that the eight frame system is the only way to go and you 10 frame bee box owners are stupid and you shouldn't do it. Well, I'm just gonna throw it out there that actually the bees don't give a shit. Most of the time, the, the size of the bee box has a lot to do with the human beings that are operating the blooming bees for their own convenience. Generally speaking, an eight frame box is a was basically invented so as it could fit into the system and actually get on you know on the pallet that they wanted to fit on the truck or on their trailer system as a general rule if you're going to go one way or the other this is my piece of advice if you're going to go eight frames just stay with eight frames it's a bloody good idea if you're going to go 10 frames just try to have everything 10 frames because it's a pain in the bum so i'm sure this is going to cause controversy but i honestly think you do whatever you like to a point like there is some basic stuff in beekeeping that you can't get wrong because you know you've got to make sure you do your brood checks and you've got to make sure you've got somewhere for them to forage and you've got some water personally if you're not moving your bees around i don't think it is a big stress out whether you have 10 or 8 frames in your box well sorry not in your box as in the whether you have that and if you've got a 10 frame box i suggest you just run with 10 frame boxes I mean, I don't know. It's it's probably very possible that the A-frame box got invented because the bloke cut the wood up wrong and said, oh, well, hell, hell, on that, I've got some boxes that a bloke made that I inherited, and they're like nine-frame boxes, so they're not really eight, and they're not really ten, so they're nine, and that's very weird because you get out there and you go, oh, man, and it has this little tiny gap when you try to put them together, so they've all been segregated off as jolly nectar carriers now, or, sorry, honey carriers, so that's where they have ended up. So, hell, there's a controversy. Nobody runs a nine frame box, but apparently this beekeeper did because he had shitloads of them. So, hell, you know, there you go. I don't think the bees care. I think it's all about the humans. And as far as the frame sizes go, which is gonna be the next question, the frame sizes is all about, if you're gonna go to your hive and you wanna take off a half a super, it's gonna be full of honey and you can take the whole thing home rather than have to do what I do and go through the frames and pick all the honey that's ripe. I like to do that because it's good for our customers and people just get proper finished honey that doesn't have to be heated up, doesn't have to be nothing. It's actually got all the flavors and all the enzymes and all the good shit honey has. And the frames are finished and I get to look at each one, put it in my carriers, bring it over to my extraction plant. And you guys out there in the world get to eat beautiful honey that's actually been finished properly. So anyway, it's a bit of a plug for my own business, but don't stress. 
next time you go to the meeting, just chill out because beekeepers have very opinionated ideas about how life goes. But don't discontent, don't, um, I don't know, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Is that how the saying goes? Because a lot of guys have heaps of information, good, good knowledge about beekeeping. And don't get into the argument about whether eight frames, 10 frames, whatever it is. Get talking about how cool their queens are or and that, that'll that get you interested. Get hold of some of that stuff. Find out about, you know, um, I don't know, what foraging plants you should be looking for around your area. Talk about some cool stuff like that. That's what I reckon anyway. Okay, John has a question for me. Not my John, a John Taylor from, I don't know where he's from, but anyway, he's got a question for me. He says, hi Mark, I always watch the YouTube and make it and you make it interesting i also have given up on the vacuum cleaner which is yes he says bee carnage which i'd agree they do survive the actual whipping up the hose and whizzing around in the vacuum cleaner and the whole turbulence thing they do actually survive that part but long term they don't enjoy it they the i don't know the mortality rate is beyond it's yeah i don't like the idea because it's just not friendly to the little darlings but I have had some people email me about the fact that they have got a different bend and a vacuum reducer and a whole thing in my jig and whatever else. And whew, me personally, I've sort of moved on a little bit from cutouts anyway because it gets a little bit hectic. We do a few for you guys because it's good fun and hell, sometimes I just like to save them. And the other question, but the main question he has here is who broke my tail light? Now there's a story just in itself. You wouldn't believe it. Well, you would believe it if you ever watched any of this show. I'm backing my ute out of the shed out on the farm and I whipped around and some silly whacker, which might have been me, left my tractor parked behind my ute, well, not behind my ute, to the side of my ute, and I reversed out, whizzed around, smacked into the spray plant right on the bloody beam that cracked me light in half. And as a footnote, the bloody thing was $380, which... Hell, now my wife's going to know because I didn't tell her how crazy dear they were. Because apparently it's the LED version, the $100 version. No, I couldn't have the bloody sensible light, could I? Could have had to be the deer one, didn't it? Anyway, I, I digress. Did you crack the other one and the other fix as well? No, okay. I only smashed one. Okay. I cracked the light on my truck, hit it with a glove, which was pretty stupid. What? <laughs> I was flicking the bees off and I had the bees on my glove and, I, and the poor old truck tail light was so brittle and it went <laughs> and it's still sitting there but it's not happy i'm sure next time i get the truck service the bloody paranoid people in the truck shop will go no oh, you can't have a cracked tail light so that'll be another 200 and something dollars anyway <laughs> the police will be pretty unhappy too well the police that'll be more expensive if the police get hold of you uh oh hello mark hello sarah oh gosh my 13 year old son has been watching your videos and is now in my case to make a fridge hive. Apologies about <laughs> this whole thing. Apologies in advance. My fridge hive making, we were in, just to clarify, young fella, me lad, we were looking for something to do. And I had an old fridge. Well, actually I went and got a fridge and I thought, let's make a top bar beehive out of a fridge. That would be cool. And it turned into quite a saga. Mind you, it is pretty cool. It's very insulated. And I think you should have a go. It's a great project. It'll keep you amused for the winter. My advice would be that you make the entrance into the hive a little bit bigger than I did. I only used bits of tube. I think you need a bigger entrance because they do struggle a bit to get through all of that. Hang on, I'm not through the whole question. We have had a flow hive for about six months and it's got his attention, which it would because bees are kind of cool. They'll get any, anybody sucked in. So we have watched your fridge hive videos and noticed it's a few years ago and so we're wondering how they're going. Any advice or tips would be great. Right, okay. Now, I would say making the fridge hive is more about the entertainment of making it and the fact that it's something different. I have a mate over in, I think he's in England, Steve in England, who has taken fridge hives to the next level. Like you wouldn't believe it. It's, I don't know, you can Google up fridge hives and he's got them everywhere in the forest. And I think he's actually going around collecting them and making for other people now. I'm not sure where you are in the world, but I'm tipping that it's probably a bit far away to import one of his hives, but you can go on there and he's got some updated fridge hive manufacturing. Uh, I would say I'm planning on making an upright fridge hive. So, if you want to throw a bit of chaos into the world, I might make a fridge hive 
on the upright way and then that like the um, Eastern Europeans have their hives like so they can work them from the back and I figure that way the fridge door will swing a bit easier but anyway if you happen to make an upright fridge hive send me some details in the map and hell I might even cheat and copy yours. I tell you what might be a better idea young Sarah is we might take our little walk out and we'll have a look at the fridge hive and we'll have a review on what we probably could have done better and we might have done different and Heck, you can see what the girls are actually doing when they're in there. I'd have to admit, I haven't actually harvested any honey from my fridge. Thank you all for your questions. Don't be shy, send them in. You never know. I haven't got all the answers, but at least I'll give you my opinion. Yeah, and don't forget to send in some video questions and we can actually answer your... We might even do a proper episode and answer your questions properly, show you what we think. Tell you what, open up the conversation. I'm sure if you read the comments, you'll get some other opinions. Because as I've always said, you get more than two beekeepers asking, answering the same question, you'll get six different answers. You get 20 beekeepers asking, answering the same question, well, hell, you should just forget about that, take notes and, hell, I don't know, come back in a week's time when they finish squabbling between themselves. But you know what? Beekeeping's a wonderful thing. And the bees know what they're doing. It's really us humans that are just trying to make life convenient. So keep on, keep on keeping on. Don't forget, show some love to your little ladies. And also I'd like to give a shout out to all the people that have felt so led to support us on Patreon and to send us donations and do a bit of shopping on the website. Um, what else is there? I think there's actually a link down here somewhere that you could actually just um, give us a one-off donation. The only reason this show has survived is, the, is because of you, because you guys share the love and show us, show us your appreciation, give us the chance to actually produce some more footage and produce some more, hopefully, generate some interest in beekeeping, which I think we're doing. I think it's all about the love of the ladies, that's what I reckon. So, share the buzz. Ha ha ha, that's a terrible pun if you're a beekeeper. <laughs>